Hello, this is how to use the gentle auto lip sync process that I had put together for the Source Filmmaker. If you have not set this up yet, especially installing the virtual machine and gentle, please check the other video. The link is in the description. Once you've got that set up, then you can come back here and I'll show a walk working example of how to actually use it. So the first thing to do is decide what we're going to use for our audio. And for this video, we are going to use some audio from my No Gods, No Kings video. Here is the Source Filmmaker audio files right here. And we're going to use these lines right here. I'm a bit tight on money right now. That too. I think I can work it off. Th five lines in total. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the auto lip sync folder that you downloaded from my website and we're going to start by running gentle input processor. So we're going to run that which brings up this interface and we're going to need two files for this. We're going to need any audio file from the folder that we're working in. So we'll just drop that one in right there and you can see it loads all the audio in that folder. And then the second thing we need is the screenplay, which we'll be pulling the transcripts from. From So right here, we're going to pull this. The most recent revision is six. And we're just going to drop that right there. And we can see that on this side, it automatically extracts all of the lines from the screenplay, provided that the screenplay is structured in the way that the tool expects, which is like so, where it simply uses brackets or parentheses to mark the shot line, and then character names themselves are full, fully capitalized with some sort of direction, followed by a colon, and then the line in quotes. That is the format it expects. If your screenplays are not structured that way, you will need to rewrite them in order to use this tool. This is the only way it expects them to work. Now we've got that, we'll just come down here to the Elizabeth lines. We'll start with this one right here. I'm a bit tight on money right now. See, as it automatically plays the line for you, and then we'll just come over here, and we'll find right here. And we listen to this. I'm a bit tight on money right now. You can see that lines perfectly, so we will bind them. But I'm sure I could make it up to you in a big way. We will Don't you that. like what you see? And Would that. you like to see more? That. I think I can work it off. Is there some place private? There we private? go. Would so those are the only five we're going to use just for this me. video. So with that being done, now that we've done done these, we need to bring go back to our virtual machine and we need to see what port we are listening on. So if we come over here, uh, don't send, and we're going to bring up a terminal. And we are going to do our pro command line to launch Docker. So it's going to be sudo docker run dash p lower quality slash gentle. Put in our password. And this will get a uh, gentle running. There we go. It's now listening. And now we're going to control alt t again. We are going to a sudo netstat dash pull pn. Put in our password once again. And we're going to look for Docker proxy. We can see it's 32768. We're going to come down here, make sure this is set to 32768. It is. We're going to hit generate output. And then it pops up the folder where it is. And here we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this entire audio out folder. We're going to copy it. We're going to go to our shared folder and paste it. And then we are going to come over here in our Linux virtual machine. We are going to go to the shared folder. We're going to copy the audio out folder and paste it to our desktop. And now we're going to CD into desktop and then we're going to CD into audio out. Okay, and now that we've CD'd in, if we do an LS, we see it lists all the files. We want to do dat dot slash transcribe dot sh and now we're just going to let this run uh, it says the audio file it's running and what it's doing and it's just going to go through and it's going to process all of these files and there we go it's done and now if we come over here and if we look at this phonemes text right here 
we can see that it has all the phonemes generated. And now we can just grab our phonemes file. We can come over here and paste. And that puts it back into our shared folder. Now we can simply come to our shared folder and we can copy this and put it right beside our file names. We will see that our gentle input processor also generated a file names.txt, which just lists these. That is exactly what we want. So now we have phonemes and file names. So now we will run the gentle output processor. And it's saying uh, name of text file, leave blank for default. Uh, for the Chinto expert phonemes, leave blank for default, and it's done. And now it's generated out these phoneme files, which if we open them up, you'll see, you see it says right there, that's what the name of it is, and then it has some phoneme data. And now we will simply cut these and we will paste them into the same folder as the audio. And now we can come over to our Windows machine and we can start Source Filmmaker. Now that in Source Filmmaker, we will quickly add those audio files. So now I'm just going to quickly place them into the scene and I'm going to add a blade, just change up the camera angle, just to make it somewhat reflective of what an actual production project would look like in terms of audio placement. And now we're going to come along to Scripts, Lord Aardvark Settings, and we need to change this shorthand. If we read it here, it says his name must start with this. If we look at all of these clips, we will see they all start with Elizabeth underscore. So that's what we will use. We we'll come back to the settings. This will be Elizabeth underscore. Save settings. And now we'll come over here. We will select all of her face. And we will hit M to make an empty keyframe. And then we'll come over here and we'll run the auto lip syncer. We will choose Elizabeth, apply auto lip sync. There we go. It puts down our keyframes. Uh, the script is a little derpy, so you have to select all the keyframes it generates, cut them, and then immediately paste them, and then select. And let's take a look at how the auto lip sync came out. I have no idea. I've never used these lines before. First time I've tried this. I'm a bit tight on money right now. But I'm sure I could make it up to you in a big way. There we go. And then this is on a new shot, so we'll do the same thing. Make sure that you have the graph editor selected. Make sure you have a blank keyframe down. And then you run the auto lip syncer. There we go. And then same thing. Cut and paste. And let's take a look. Don't you like what you see? Would you like to see more? I th yeah, I want to stuttered right there. Would you like to see more? I think I can work it off. There we go. It's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty darn close and a lot better than what the automatic phoneme generation would have done. Let's see what it would have done, just out of curiosity, what the automatic phoneme generator and source filmmaker would have built. So we're just going to select these clips. And we're going to extract phonemes. Go for it. And let's see what it would have come up with. Don't you like what you see? Would you like to see more? I think I can work it off. And of course, you don't have any keyframes for it. And we were to undo all of this and go back to this and compare. Let's just go ahead and respine it again real fast. Don't you like what you see? Would you like to see more? I think I can work it off. Definitely a lot better and very quickly done. And then the first one... I'm a bit tight on money right now, but I'm sure I could make it up to you in a big way. Perfect. There you go. That's all it... All that's needed. It's a little quirky working with Linux and getting the virtual, mach virtual machine sh set up as in the other video is an entirely different story. But you only have to set it up once, otherwise it's a very highly automated workflow with just a few quirks here and there. There we go, it's the culmination of what a few, about a week's worth of research and development has gotten me. I hope people can find it useful.